Good evening, and welcome to phase three of my Media Life Project. This is the part where I sit down with you all, my lovely audience, and show you just a little bit of what I have learned from my time here in African American Communication 275 here at the University of Louisville. This is bigger than now propaganda of a one-sided story. This is me through the lens of a problematic white folk experiencing white guilt the white boy who always comes to me on Facebook wanting to play the reverse racism card. The white people who say that we live in a colorblind world and that they don't see race because race is not an issue. Well, to them, white people, race is not an issue because they can go walking down the street and not have to worry about getting followed, watched, or shot at by police. They can slack off at work or school because they don't have to work as hard to get half of what they have. You know, in a white dominated male misogynistic world, you don't have to worry about anything off this list because the melanin in my skin has already given me a much more intense life than you from basically birth. This short assignment is for the black girls and for the black boys who need a little bit of reassurance to let them know that they can conquer the world. <laughs> Dear white people, sit back and enjoy the show. My name is not. Hello, nigga. But you will address me as Corey Damon Thomas. Please stop touching my hair. Does this look like a petting zoo to you? How come the only black movies Hollywood wants to make are ones with black mammies in fact? For black women in pain, man. So basically, we got black people dying in the past and black people dying in the press. Yes, station. Dear white people, the minimum requirement of black friends needed to not seem racist has just been raised to two. Sorry, but your weed man, Tyrone, does not count. with, you know, characters in them instead of stereotypes wrapped in Christian dogma? Why is every educated person inherently evil? Your hair is so cute. Is it weaved? Weaved. Dating a black person to piss off your parents is a form of racism. Sure. How'd you feel if someone started a Dear Black People? No need. Mass media from Fox News makes it clear what white people think of us. I don't see what the point is in blaming white folks for everything. I really don't see the issue. Never ran into any lynch mob. Because I think the hardest thing to be in the American workforce is educated white guy. Mulatto, mulatto, mulatto. Did somebody say mulatto? Many people wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. When I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arm the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man the fellows stand, or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes, the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist, the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breasts, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, 
It's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palms of my hands, the need for my care, because I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's my mother and all your mothers and my grandmothers and your grandmothers and my great grandmothers and your greats and my great greats and your and all you women and me. Hello everyone, my name is Nanny Crody and I'm a graduating senior here at the University of Louisville. I'm a double major in Pan-African Studies and Political Science with a minor in Communication. I'm here to talk to you all today about white privilege and my personal blackness journey. I like to begin with as a small child, I struggled with the idea of race. The concept of race was never something that I learned about at home. It wasn't until I was in kindergarten when there was a substitute teacher who referred to me as little black girl. That statement stuck with me and wrong for a long period of time in my life. I wanted to change myself. Coming from an all white kindergarten classroom, I never understood why I was different. I was never treated differently until that day when the substitute called me little black girl and refused to call me by my name. It was at that point that I learned I was different. I was different from the rest, but I still could blend in. It was from that day I tried to hide who I was. I did not want anything that was naturally black. I wanted a perm in my hair. I begged for a perm. I actually got my first perm in sixth grade because I begged my mother for one. And after saying no, I snuck and did it with my sister. It was an ongoing battle throughout my high school career to still try to blend in, still try to hide my blackness. It wasn't until I got to the University of Louisville taking my first Pan-African Studies class where I was angry. I was angry, I was hurt, and I was devastated with myself that I had tried for so long to deny myself of who I really was. It was the white society, it was the European standard of beauty that told me I wasn't beautiful. It was the European standards that had denied me my rights to being black in America. It was here at the University of Louisville I began my natural hair journey. It was here at the University of Louisville I found myself. It was here at the University of Louisville I began to love myself, but especially love my blackness. And in this ongoing journey, being a Pan-African Studies major, I've learned about my people. I've learned about the forgotten individuals. I've learned about the sisters who made a difference in the United States, the sisters who've made a difference on the continent, but not only the sisters, the brothers. I've learned about my black identity, who I was. It was white privilege. It was those students in the class who were different than me. It was those students whose parents made more money than my parents. It was those students in my class who had the idea that they could turn on and off who they were. It was those students who could decide what was good and what wasn't good. It was those students who told me my hair was bad. It was those students who told me my hair was nappy. It was those students that used their privilege to graduate the auditorium of my class. It was those students who hurt me. But I'm here today to tell you I am a strong black woman and I'm confident in who I am. Yeah. Thank you.